Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Noah Fleming, uh, now at Memorial University, uh, and I'm going to be talking to you about this new paper uh, with Sam Buss and Russell and Pagliazzo, uh, titled The TFMP Characterizations of Proof Systems and Monotone Circuits. Um, so as the name suggests, this paper is going to talk about two notions of complexity. Uh, first is uh, circuit complexity, and in particular, monotone circuit complexity. And the second is proof complexity. So I'll start by introducing both of these. Um, so in monotone circuit complexity, um, we're interested in certain models of monotone circuits or monotone computation. Um, we have some particular monotone function in mind that we're interested in the complexity of computing it. And we want to understand what the smallest circuit in this model of monotone computation is uh, that computes this function. So we're interested in proving lower bounds on the M circuit complexity of these functions F. Um, on the other hand, proof complexity studies um, the complexity of proving uh, tautologies. So we have a particular proof system in mind. Um, and we're interested in the complexity of proving some tautology F in this proof system. So what's the smallest proof in this proof system of this tautology? Um, and so these are both very vibrant uh, areas of research. Um, and recently there's been kind of a ton of breakthroughs uh, in both areas that have resulted from uh, uncovering these surprising and very deep connections between them. So on one hand, we have interpolation theorems, um, which for certain proof systems, turn proofs in those proof systems into circuits in an associated model of monotone computation uh, for computing some associated function. Uh, on the, in the other direction, we have these query to communication lifting theorems uh, that turn uh, computations in some circuit model into proofs in an associated proof system. Um, and these have been like really, really impactful recently. Um, they've resulted in a vast variety of uh, new lower bounds, both in proof complexity and monotone circuit complexity, and uh, a bunch of surrounding areas, such as communication complexity and extended formulations and so on. Um, and, and really the reason why this is happening is because this is allowing us to use tools from a seemingly very different area uh, to be applied to the area that we're looking at. Um, and so this is giving kind of a new perspective, uh, which has been very useful. Um, okay, so these interpolation theorems and query to communication lifting theorems uh, are very, very good to establish, very useful. Um, and so a very natural question is, when can we expect a proof system or a monotone circuit model to admit such an interpolation theorem or lifting theorem? When, uh, for a given proof system, how can we tell if um, we can take its proofs and turn it into uh, circuits? Or for a given circuit model, can we take its circuits and turn it into proofs? Um, so that's the question that this paper uh, makes progress towards answering. Okay, and to do so, we use tools from the world of TFNP. So TFNP studies uh, the complexity of computing uh, total search problems, or in particular, efficiently verifiable total search problems. Um, so recently, the reason we use this is that recently TFMP has kind of emerged as this uh, very cool roadmap uh, for the existence of interpolation escalation theorems. Um, so I'll try to explain how this came about. Um, okay. Uh, and to do so, I'll, I'm, I'm going to first talk about how both proof systems and uh, monotone circuit models can be characterized by the complexity of computing associated total search problems. Remember, TFMP is the study of total search problems. Um, so for anybody who's familiar with query communication lifting theorems, you might think that this picture that I had up before um, is a little bit weird, right? <laughs> Usually query to communication lifting theorems uh, lift 
lower bounds on query models to lower bounds of communication models, not proof systems to monotone circuits. And um, so this is, uh, um, th this can kind of be thought uh, of proof as proof to circuit in all of the cases where we have these lifting theorems. Um, and this is because, well, uh, on one hand, uh, it's well known that many models of monotone circuit complexity are characterized by the complexity of computing a total search problem, the karshmer vigerson search problem in a model of communication complexity. So you know, this, this equivalence here is saying that um, for some models of monotone circuit complexity, um, their circuits are equivalent to protocols in a model of communication complexity for computing the monotone karshmer vigerson search problem. This is the uh, kind of an extension of the um, seminal result by karshmer and vigerson. And on the other hand, um, for proof complexity, there is a, a total search problem, just like the monotone karshmer vigerson game, that characterizes the complexity of proofs in many proof systems. This is known as the false clause search problem. Um, very quickly, it's not going to be really relevant to this talk, uh, but very quickly, the false clause search problem is you're given a tautology and a truth assignment, and you want to find a clause that's falsified in the negation of that tautology. Um, okay, so we can actually view these interpolation theorems and these query communication lifting theorems as relating protocols, query protocols for the false clause search problem to communication protocols for the monotone karshmer vigerson search problem. And these are both two total search problems. Okay, and so TFNP is the study of computing total search problems, or in particular, efficiently verifiable total search problems. It's total functional NP. Um, and so TFNP itself, um, you can think of it as a, as a complexity class. It doesn't, it's very unlikely to have uh, complete problems. And so researchers focused on a number of interesting subclasses that do have complete problems. And so they've organized these total search problems into a variety of subclasses. So here at the top, we have the class TFNP of efficiently verifiable total search problems. At the bottom, we have functional P, which is all the total search problems that can be computed in polynomial time. And in between, we have a variety of classes, each of which has a complete problem. Okay. And so in TFNP, we typically study the Turing machine complexity of total search problem. This is just the functional analog of NP. However, just like um, NP, we don't we don't really have a chance right now of of separating um, various uh, uh, TFNP classes. Like any separation between TFNP classes would imply P not equal NP. Um, and so, therefore, it's been kind of useful in order to get an understanding of the lay of the land in order to consider other models of computation, replace Turing machine with something else. And so the classic and sort of standard model of computation instead to use is, is query complexity or, or decision tree complexity. Um, and this started in this paper by Beam et al, um, who showed that you know, separations um, in this deci decision tree model of TFNP imply black box separations or generic oracle separations. And so a, a being able to prove separations in this decision tree model implies oracle separations between these TFNP classes and gives us some sort of understanding of the, uh, hopefully understanding of the lay of the land of, of these TFNP classes. And where this interpolation theorems and um, query to communication lifting theorem stuff comes in, um, really uh, either started or became like very clear in this early or this, this fairly recent paper of Goose, Kamath, Robert, and Sokolov, um, who showed that certain proof systems are actually equivalent to these uh, decision tree TFNP classes. Um, 
So in this case, we're going to say that these proof systems are characterized by a TFMP class if they're equivalent. And, and what I mean by equivalent is I mean that um, every a total search problem in one of these classes corresponds to a um, tautology that this proof system can efficiently prove. And so the first one uh, was that the class PLS is equivalent to resolution. And since then, there has been quite a number of, um, of, of equivalences. Um, so similarly, we can study, instead of using the model of computation, which is decision trees, we can use communication protocols. Um, and in the same paper, uh, Goose, Kamath, Robert, and Sokolov showed that also um, certain certain monotone circuit models are equivalent to these communication TFNP classes. Uh, for example, PLS is equivalent to monotone circuits. And yeah, there's there's a bunch of other ones. Okay. Um, so the real upshot comes from the following observation. Uh, so when we have both a decision tree characterization and a communication characterization of the same TFNB class. So for example, here we have PLS um, in the decision tree world is, is equivalent to resolution and PLS in this communication world is equivalent to monotone circuits. Then we immediately, in, in a black box way, we get an interpolation theorem. Um, and this follows just because communication protocols can simulate uh, decision trees, basically. If, if you look at it, this is really the only observation you need. Okay, so it, it's a black, these characterizations give us a black box way to generate interpolation theorems. So here's the first interpolation theorem from resolution to monotone circuits by Krychek, and there's a bunch of other ones. And in fact, um, you can essentially fit all of the known interpolation theorems into this model. You may need to change the definition of communication protocol to be a different model, but maybe this is outside this talk. Okay, and the second observation goes in the other direction. Um, you can view all of the known uh, query to communication lifting theorems um, as relating the communication version of a TFMB class to its decision tree version. So for example, um, at the very bottom here, we have the famous Roz McKenzie um, lifting theorem, um, which uh, lifts lower bounds on decision trees to lower bounds on communication complexity, or this can be thought of instead as a, a way to connect uh, the communication version of FP to the decision tree version of FP. And here are the other. Uh, many of the other main uh, query communication lifting groups. Okay, so here are our main two observations. And kind of the upshot of these is that we can use this, now use this landscape of TFNP in order to understand when interpolation and query communication lifting theorems occur by understanding when proof systems and monotone circuit models admit TFNP characterizations. So now we can actually get necessary and sufficient conditions for um, lifting theorems and interpolation theorems. Okay, so this raises yeah two very natural questions. So under what conditions does a TFMP class admit a proof system or circuit characterization? And the converse, under what conditions does a proof system or circuit model uh, admit a TFMP characterization? And so um, the work in this paper answers both of these. We provide necessary and sufficient conditions for each of these. Okay, so let's start with the first one and I'll describe our results first for proof complexity and then I'll talk about the circuit complexity ones. They're very, very similar. Um, okay, so under what conditions does a TFMP class admit a proof system characterization? Um, so we show that, that every TFMP class has a proof system which characterizes it. And, um, if you think for a little bit, it's not too hard to come up with what this proof system is. It's it's kind of dumb. It is a proof system in the formal sense, but not a very natural one. So proofs in this proof system are just reductions to a complete problem for this TFMP class. And you can see that this is a proof system in the formal Kupferkow sense. 
Um, and for the other direction, maybe this one's a little bit more interesting. Um, what conditions uh, does the proof system have to satisfy in order to admit a TFMP characterization? So here we show that um, this is the case if and only if the proof system P um, is well behaved in a, in a certain formal sense. It's not super important. We just want it to be closed under decision tree reductions. Um, and it has short proofs of its own soundness. So it can prove that P proofs are sound. Um, so more formally, what we mean by proving its own soundness, we mean that it can prove an efficiently verifiable version of a reflection principle about itself. Uh, so efficiently verifiable um, is required by the PFNP world. We want uh, to be able to check solutions efficiently. Um, and a reflection principle, this is something that has been studied for a while in proof complexity, is a statement that says that if F has a P proof, then F is a tautology. So you write this down, and by efficiently verifiable, we're going to enforce that it's written down as a CNF formula of polylogarithmic width. Okay? So a proof system admits a TFMP characterization. Um, if and only if it has short proofs of an efficiently verifiable uh, reflection principle about itself. And uh, we also show that the uh, this proof system that we constructed from any TFMB class can prove a reflection principle about itself. Okay. Um, and as a proof of concept, we give a TFMB class that characterizes the polynomial calculus. This is kind of a uh, for those of you who are familiar with TFMP, this is a very natural sort of DAG-like version of PPA or PPAD, depending on the field over which polynomial calculus is defined. And we show that the polynomial calculus can prove one of these efficiently verifiable reflection principles about itself. Okay, um, so now let's move on to the circuit complexity versions of our results. Um, so we have the same questions, you know, when does a TFMP class admit a circuit characterization? Um, and we show that every TFMP class gets a, uh, has a model of monotone circuit, which characterizes it. It's, it's a similar one to the uh, proof system world. Um, and also, um, the other direction, uh, what, under what conditions does a monotone circuit circuit admit a TFMP characterization. Um, so here we show that this is the case if and only if the monotone circuit has a universal family of functions and is also well behaved in the sense that it's, it's closed under uh, low depth reductions. Um, so what's a universal family of function? So it's a function f such that for any partial function g, if there, um, if there's a small circuit for G in this monotone circuit model, then there is a string Z such that if you set some of the bits of F according to the string Z, then um, F restricted by Z is basically equal to the partial function G. Um, so basically we can recover uh, these partial functions G um, that uh, C efficiently computes uh, just by taking F and restricting it. And the second one is that C efficiently computes this function F. So basically, we can just focus on this universal family. Okay. Um, so yeah, to recap, so we show that um, if you have a monotone uh, circuit model, then it admits a TFMP characterization uh, if and only if it has a universal family of functions. Okay, so those are our main results. I'm not going to go into any more detail beyond what I've just said. Um, look at the paper for that. Um, and I just want to end with one uh, very tantalizing, I think, open problem, which is, so um, by establishing both proof and circuit characterizations of the TFM class, we immediately get a lifting theorem or sorry, immediately get an interpolation theorem. Um, is the same true for lifting theorems? Uh, so if we have 
a circuit and proof system characterization of a TFNP class, do we immediately get a lifting theorem? This seems much more difficult to establish than the um, uh, interpolation theorem direction, because that one's just immediate. Uh, but I think this is a very exciting open problem. All right. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk.